our road trips all tend to start off with something going bad on the first day. Make sure nothing weighs you down on the outside. This is bad. One of our coolest hikes I think we've ever done. Yeah, it's one of the best in Washington for sure, but also among the best in the world. This is the Gifford Pinchot National Forest. Located in southwest Washington state, it encompasses over 1.3 million acres and includes Mount St. Helens, best known as the deadliest volcano eruption in U.S. history. For the next few days, we'll be exploring this forest for the very first time. Come along with us. We have found our campsite for tonight. That's right, we are camping this time and we're not huge campers or anything but we did decide to come and we drove over four hours from Seattle and entered the Gifford Pinchot Forest or something like that. I like to call it the Pinocchio Forest because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to say the name. <laughs> right, and we're actually short on light so we have to get busy with the tent. We just bought it so we don't know how to do it so we need to open it. We like halfway know what we're doing. I guess we should explain that it wasn't that easy to get a camping spot and we had to come and everything was reserved we decided to come to this late and we had to look for first come first serve and we left after work so that meant we could have gotten nothing yes it's a Friday and we decided two days ago I think that we were going to come come and do this uh, this camping trip Well, good morning. Not exactly off to a good start here this morning. We had everything ready here to make coffee. We have our Aeropress, we have the grinder, the beans, and we have a stove, the jet boil by MSR. And it wouldn't work. Last time it worked, and the only time it worked, the first time. And this time I would turn it on and it wouldn't let gas out, so it wouldn't start. And then it must have gotten loose because the gas came out and then I sparked it. And then it caught on fire with the whole canister and everything. So now that's the remainings of our stove. So long story short, it exploded at like 7 a.m. There was a big explosion in the campground and no one caught on to it it seems because no one came running to ask us what the hell we did oh yeah the canister flew all the way here and here's the canister around 15 20 feet from the fire where luckily I threw the whole stove and the canister while they were burning our plan for coffee and food is ruined so now we need to adapt and improvise but hey the night was nice the tent did well here we woke up warm and dry it's a good lesson in carrying backups, I think, because we do have an alternate stove and we probably should have brought that stove. I'm pretty sad. I thought the stove was a really good one and it totally failed us and it exploded. Well, like we said, we're adapting and improvising and we made it down to the gorge where there's a coffee shop and we're getting coffee and breakfast this way. That's right. At least we have options, it turns out. We're not in the total wilderness, which is working in our favor right now. So we realized as well that we've now tried, this is our third time Right? Yes. Trying to make coffee at camp. And each time there's been something that went wrong. The first time we ran out of gas. The second time we actually forgot the whole water boiler. And the third time our uh, gas, ooh, our gas exploded. Oh yeah, look at that. Our road trips all tend to start off with something going bad on the first day. <laughs> so, but the thing is, something goes bad and we always overcome and things get better. <laughs> We just came and a dog came and chased out a flock of geese. <laughs> there it is. So we came to the Columbia River Gorge, which is really gorgeous. It honestly deserves its name. It wasn't our plan to come here, but we've been here before because, and uh, it's really nice to see it. But yeah, it wasn't quite the plan, but since we had to get coffee, <laughs> might as well stop. Well, we have a little explaining to do because yesterday we arrived late and we couldn't film very much and vlog and tell you what this is about. We came to the Gifford Pinchot Rainforest because it's one that is farther from Seattle, so it's seldom explored from Seattle. It took us over four hours to get there and it was very dark and in the morning we had the fail with the stove 
exploding and so all that distracted us a bit from the mission which is to film a lot of waterfalls and also to look for the comet. This is actually the last weekend that the comet Neowise is visible before it's gone for like 6,000 years. So, yeah. <laughs> so and, and it's supposed to be really clear, should be really great weather. We're in a really great location for it. So fingers crossed that works out tonight. But if not, the Milky Way will be out. So we'll at least get that. We just set off on another trail and it leads to a waterfall. And that's why we chose to come here. There are many really cool waterfalls in this park. Found the creek. You want to peek at the creek? That is chilly. Yeah, that is cold. So far, very pleasant trail. It's a magical forest once again. Mm -hmm. Really dry, really flat. This bridge looks like the scariest thing so far. One person bridge though. And it looks like a dry riverbed which probably comes alive in the winter and spring when it's raining. Now sounds like we're close, starting to roar. And there are giant boulders next to me. It's cool, it's amazing. What's so cool about waterfalls in the Northwest is that they are always surrounded by moss. It looks like a fairy tale because all this vapor from the water keeps leaping towards the walls. I didn't actually know what this one looked like. There's another waterfall, which I think we're gonna see next, which I do know what it looks like, but this one, I didn't have any idea. We're gonna check out another very good looking waterfall. It's one of the most well-known in the area called Panther Creek Falls, and I've seen many photos of it, so I'm super excited about this waterfall. At first glance, you can't quite tell where the waterfalls are. You hear a river. But if you look really hard, you'll see a very helpful sign here. I'm just kidding, this is a terrible sign. So it is about 7.30 right now, so we came later in the day because we thought earlier in the day uh, it was going to be too crowded and I think we were right. Um, but yeah, it's really close by, really easy to get to and the views are fantastic. back from the waterfall it was too loud to talk but wow what a great looking waterfall it was absolutely worth the hike it's a really really short hike and there's actually two viewing platforms so there's one up top but you've got to go all the way down to the bottom to get the full glimpse of the full waterfall On our last day we traded in waterfalls for mountains specifically Mount St. Helens hiking it so I'm really excited I don't really know what we have in store so far going at it for about half a mile we've already gained this much elevation we're seeing Mount Adams there I think Mount Rainier that way I saw mm. and this way is Mount St. Helens once we climb we'll be seeing all three of them 
The reason this hike has so many flowers is that there was a famous volcano eruption here in 1980, Mount St. Helen, where it destroyed the big trees. There was old growth forest here, very big trees, very thick, but they got blown out by a big volcano. So now the undergrowth and flowers are taking over. We came up on a sign that it's a fork and our uh, hike is not on it. But luckily we have downloaded our map with all trails and here I know that we have to go this way because my GPS works even if there's no internet. The data is local so we can navigate just fine this way. Interesting place right here. Well, there's Mount Adams and right here is Mount Rainier so we're starting to get both uh, permanent glaciers in one view already it's pretty cool because they both look kind of similar but there are little differences when you can see them both in the same frame you're like oh yeah that's how Rainier is different that's how Adams is different you learn them more intimately here uh -huh. for now we're going up and up and we're going all the way up on top of that ridge and beyond another intersection at the two mile marker this one does tell us which way our mountain is <laughs> and we are indeed at about two miles so it's now the four and we still have that stunning view of mount adams and we're up top so it's nice and cool breezes here great place to pause for a minute <laughs> mount margaret this way he's named after my mother how nice oh there's saint helen around the corner oh man this is the coolest part because now, oh, and the lake, yes. This is amazing. The reason I picked this trail is this lake and this mountain are your closest subject, actually. So you keep on um, walking the crest above them in a way, not above really, because that's higher, but near them. I didn't know there was a lake here. Yeah, it's a cool that's lake. A big one. And yeah. so much petrified wood in it. almost stumbled upon a snake and it was stubborn and wouldn't want to move off the trail and as soon as I pulled the GoPro off it ran away. I love you, you take care of snakes for me so I don't have to see them. As long as they don't come around from behind. Shut stop it! <laughs> Alright so go fast. The good news is these snakes are not poisonous however if they do bite you it hurts and it itches and it's nasty. Well, here is a little precarious. It's not the worst drop if you fall, but you'll still be damaged. It's really crumbly and you really gotta watch it. The trail barely exists in some of these parts. Right here, drop. You gotta make sure nothing weighs you down on the outside. This is bad. You gotta lean into it and use the foothold. There's only one. Mm, yeah, this should be fine. My legs aren't long enough. Yeah. Okay, you got it. This was the hardest part. And then this clears up. That was more dangerous than the snake. I wonder what's around this corner. Nothing. <laughs> you gotta wait for another corner, never mind. One more fork, lakes are around us. If we wanted to hike another million miles. Incredible here. Quite a steep slope we're on, but the switchback style helps us. And the whole slope is flowers. It's a bit deceptive cli climbing because you look at something, it looks really close, and it may be actually creasing up and down by the end. And three, four hours later, you're still doing it. break time it's on the third mile so we're a quarter in and we're getting tired so now we're no longer that fresh and naive so we have st helens there 
we now are seeing a little peak of Mount Hood. In Oregon, that's Oregon yeah, over there. Yeah, that's Oregon. And behind this hill, I think if we keep going, we'll eventually see Adams too. And then right there is Mount Rainier. The big one. Yeah. That's the big brother of them all. That's so cool. We usually see it from the other side, actually, from Seattle. Overall, we'll make it. We're replenishing our water right now. Yep. And we're seeing patches of snow. If I can reach them, I'll fill this bottle here that Susie has. And we'll leave it in the sun to melt and get some water that way. We're almost there. Not almost there. <laughs> we're halfway there. It's how you look at it. I look at it as almost there. Mm -hmm. You gotta keep the morale going, you know? <laughs> I'm the realist around here. I guess so. <laughs> Notice the amount of flowers here. This is the trail. your head and you see a volcano that erupted only 30 years ago. This is like one of the best hikes I think. Yeah. You're just looking at awesome mountain peaks like the entire time. Hiking through wildflowers. Yeah. Oh look at this tree. This gnarly tree. So Got cool. blasted by the volcano. Wow. I learned to hike with my grandma when I was five years old and she would take me out and she would pick wildflowers. So to this day when I'm out and I see and I smell the flowers and it reminds me of my grandma and my hometown and the forest. Oh, it's Rufus. Yeah, yeah, it's Rufus right there. Oh. Yeah. Well, we were hoping for snow so we can drink it and we actually have to walk on it a bit here too. It's already melting and making pure water. Let's see how much we sink in it. Not at all, really. Fun times. I'll finish my water because there's a source and we'll show you a trick. This water just literally melted right there. So probably it's clean. However, there's still flies and larvas and things living around here. So what we're gonna do is make sure it's cool. The life straw. Which they say is award winning and I believe it because it really is a savior. Look nope. there. Oh my god, it's so delicious. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to find water. They warn you up front that you won't find water. So we were kind of rationing up until this point. But when you find water, you're like, okay, fine. Like we can hydrate properly and feel better about that whole thing. Sweet. And now the top doesn't look that scary anymore. It's less than two miles away. It will be good. Almost there, Mount Margaret, one mile. What you see down the gray, it looks like snow or something, mud or something, ground so soil, but it's actually petrified wood from the explosion. Four years ago, it's been in this lake and it's petrified, so it's not rotting. We made it! <laughs> Almost. Almost. One more fork in the road. Until now, the entire time we've been following this boundary trail. And here, finally, for the last stretch, there's a little split for Mount Margaret, which is really this. This is Mount Margaret right there. The last part is a bit steep and it crumbles. Uh, Mount Rainier, also fourth glacier. <sighs> Technically, that is the summit, but I think we can call it good. One of our coolest hikes I think we've ever done. Yeah, it's one of the best in Washington for sure, but also among the best in the world. Yeah. Four glaciers, a volcano, mm -hmm. petrified wood filling lakes from the explosion. It just doesn't get much better. And the meadows and the flowers. Mm -hmm. Smells amazing. We summit it! <laughs> Yay! It's all us, it's all ours. Yeah, that's right, there's no one else here. Yeah, so good. All ours. Yeah. We're going
going down very carefully, slowly, and I have totally entered the, the state of Zen meditation, completely blanking and simply doing the action. That's really the, the cheat, how to enter meditation, is just completely focus on what you're doing and do one thing. That's what we're gonna do now. Here we go, we can see our car now. Down there. It's like what, a mile? Yeah, more than a mile. Sign said a mile, but we'll see. It's more than a mile. You just have to grit your teeth. <laughs> we'll make it. Oh my God, we did it. 5.40, we have walked 11.3 miles, six hours and 45 minutes. We did it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was tough, but not the worst, honestly. But I'm glad it's done now. Like last weekend, you're like, I think I could do another one. And yeah, not this time. One. Nope. nope. There's a, there's a reason now. you don't see me jumping around rocks this time. Mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. measure. That's so, right. 11 is 12 miles, not jumping on rocks. Yeah. Now it's time to drive home and get a burger. <laughs>